boogers. Ah, good morning, guys. I've been at it for a few hours now. Sorry, we're right by the highway. Hopping out to do a load check. Uh, we got about uh, nine hours and some change till home. So we'll deliver these trucks tomorrow. Still hauling around these classic Chevys. Look how destroyed this truck got with bugs last night. Probably gonna spray that off before I deliver it. Even though if he wanted it protected, he should have paid for enclosed, but I'm a nice guy. It ain't gonna take much for me to hit a car wash and just spray the bugs off for him. Smell brakes. I don't know if that's from this exit ramp or what, because I kind of made an abrupt pull into here because I almost missed it. Um, let me check the temperatures on these hubs and these brakes. Check the tire pressure. Uh, on that tire. Um, it's not leaking anymore. Last time I checked it, the, uh, the nail's still in there, but it's not leaking. All right. Good morning, afternoon. I don't even know what it is right now. What time zone am I in? still in central time so um i had some recorded already this morning and uh i don't know what happened it's all messed up anyways we are in uh we're in indiana now it's uh probably another eight hours or so home from here yeah eight hours and 37 minutes now i had just pulled over well i pulled over earlier and I uh, was doing a load check and I smelled hot, kind of breakish smell. Uh, so I always keep, and I'll walk around and I'll show you here. I always keep a uh, oops, infrared thermometer on me. And you can get these from Harbor Freight for like, I don't know, I think less than 10 bucks. So what I like to do yeah, we still got these beauties with us. What I like to do is uh, walk up to each hub, check each wheel, then shoot in through the wheel on the brakes. I lost the center cap on this side, and you'll get a you'll get a readout. 102 degrees. Now it's 90 degrees, so that's pretty good. It's 90 degrees outside, so. 10 degrees from rolling resistance and braking is not bad at all. You know, I would I would say probably anywhere, don't quote me, 20 to 30 degrees over ambient temperatures, probably normal. Just go around and check. See, this one's 120, 106-ish. Uh, yeah, just kind of check all around. I think I was on the tire. The tire's probably a little hotter. But the point of this is I came over to this side this morning is where the hot smell was coming from. And this center wheel was 230 degrees. All the rest were about 100. Now that calls concern, obviously. So what I did was I jacked up that wheel, got it off the ground and spun it and i could tell it had a lot of resistance so what i did is pulled the cap off for the um the axle nut i popped that off and made sure that that was tight there's no play in the wheel and uh that it had grease and it had all that and when he was spinning the wheel i actually had the back two off the ground so i could spin the rear one and it would you know, free spin pretty good and that center one was tight. So what I ended up doing is getting underneath the trailer um, and adjusting the brakes. Now when I was adjusting the brakes, I went backwards when I was spinning it and I heard like a, like a pop. 
wasn't real bad and then all of a sudden it was you know not completely free spin and had a little resistance they're supposed to have some resistance uh, but not be tight like it was and then it was free spinning so I just checked it there and it was at a hundred so it cooled down the last that was about 10 miles ago it cooled down 130 degrees after that in 10 miles I'd say we're uh, I'd say we're okay but if I wouldn't have caught that that probably would have resulted in um, bearing failure fire you know and you know ruining that axle catching the trailer on fire so you just got to kind of get out sometimes when you walk around and check your load be looking for smells for you know just touch things you know touch the wheels see if they're hot and uh pick up one of those thermometers for you know for a couple bucks and uh can potentially save you a lot of money delivery time Got pulled out way past the white line. Get around him. God told me to meet him here at the Crown Station. There's a diner. I guess this is the diner behind it. Because there's a big parking lot back here we can unload at. So we're in Jefferson, Maryland. This thing came all the way from, uh, what was it? Mancota, Mancoto, something like that. Um, blah, 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 Minnesota. So about, uh, I don't know, 900 miles or so, I think it was. So we're just gonna pull up here along the side, get this thing unloaded. The guy should be around here somewhere. Oh, these guys are fogging up. Little switcherooski, wedge, flatbed. Time to go. Why would it not start pouring when I pull in to load? Well, let's see what we got here on the radar. Look at this fool walking around in the rain just to find what I'm loading. That's why I come here. Alrighty. You hear the cicadas? You guys don't know what they are, look them up. That's what that noise is. Alright, we got two truck beds. Man, this thing's fogged up from being in the truck. Two truck beds. Uh, this one goes to Rochester, New York. That one delivers today. Uh, we hung it off the back because it's got a tailboard. And that one goes to Somerset, PA. So we're delivering that one right now. Only about 3,000 pounds, I think, total for all that stuff for those two beds. And uh, those are two separate loads. And we just got a third that goes to Minnesota, which I was just in, and that should be going, uh, Rochester, New York will go next week, and uh, Minnesota will go next week, excuse me, as well. Whoa, there's a cicada. Holy. That's, that's what a cicada, oh, it's gone. How'd you like that? All right, so while we stand here and wait to get unloaded, I just heard him fire up the forklift. I think he's on the other side of the building. But hear me out, all right? Hot shot boxing, all right? First up, the main event, we have Toad Piglet versus Hot Shot Dave. I'll set it up, I'll broadcast it, and we'll let those two duke it out in the ring. On the undercard, we have South Georgia hotshot and we will let him pick one person from his comments because his comments are a mess I feel bad for the guy but the way he uh, the way he reacts to it's pretty hilarious and uh, calls the people out about it but hotshot boxing coming in 2021 what do we have in here got some fresh Alcoas 
for the Freightliner that's around the corner there, and I haven't shown this thing. Got this thing back. Got a uh, ARP 625s in it, fresh head gasket, new water pump. Uh, it should be about it. Put my wheels on. TIS off-road wheels on Venom tires. We got 3312, 33 1250s, or 20 by 10s. I like it. Unload these wheels and off to pick up a trailer all right guys good morning welcome back uh we are in i think this is bath new york uh we started at the house this morning we got uh about four hours into our day it's uh nine o'clock now we, yeah we left around five so all we have is this zeus truck bed um about 1500 pounds and it paid full truck rate because the company that this is going to actually installed the wrong bed on one of their customers truck did all the install everything and it was customer came to pick it up and it was a wrong bed uh so needless to say that customer wasn't very happy so this had to get up here pretty quickly i picked this up on thursday today's monday and here it is so um but yeah that's all we got could have filled the rest of the deck with something coming up here but we're kind of in a time crunch now uh, we've also got to get out to uh like something's in the weeds down there um if we were in the south i'd be scared like it was an alligator or something but anyways we've got to uh we've got to get west again out to minnesota probably down to iowa and um yeah so that being said i'm gonna get fuel here since we're in New York, cheaper than Pennsylvania. Um, what have we got? 329 there. Let's see what our discount is with the fuel card. We use a TSD and uh, got some breakfast. And let's get on the road. So a couple more things before we get any farther. Um, if you guys haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. You guys have been killing it recently and I really do appreciate it. it helps more than you guys know and uh if rocking my buddy's sweatshirt today if any of you dodge guys have g56 transmissions in your hot shot truck or your regular truck or whatever and you're having transmission issues uh reach out to my buddy levi at lp performance on instagram send him a dm uh he rebuilds them he usually has remands in stock in case you got to get something quick uh but feel free to reach him at reach out to him if you have any problems and he can get you taken care of so uh, fuel here is 309 with my fuel card, uh, so we're getting, you know, around 20 cents off a gallon, and uh, we'll probably get probably 70 to 80 gallons while we're here, and that'll get us a uh, a free shower. All right, well here's our first pickup, F550 cabin chassis. Had to charge them a little extra to take these weeds with us. I had it parked all the way back in the grass over there. But I'm going to pull it all the way on this way instead of backing it on because then I can nose the mower if I need to up under the back here, which I don't know if I will or not. But it's one of my customers I'm picking the mower up for. I usually don't know what I'm getting myself into, but it is what it is. So let's get this thing pulled up on here. Brand new F550 goes about 10 miles from my house to an upfitter. Um, I don't even know. It's got three miles on it. Let's get it pulled up here. All right, well, unfortunately, we had to put it on backwards. We were uh, doing a burnout there trying to get it up on. It's only two-wheel drive. So I could have ramped it, but I gave her hell. But this valence sits so low that I didn't want to tear up the valence. So we just put it on backwards. We'll have room for that mower. I think we'll be able to finagle it up. And then do something with the ramps, either lay them down kind of towards the mower or or whatnot. But she's probably two, two, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 feet long at least. Let's go. Okay. 
This is the citation uh, it's section for section 1301. I'll make it easier on you next time. I'll pull in. Yeah, so. just pull, yeah. Like I said, we'd have probably had a discussion and off you would have went. I appreciate it. So, yeah, be careful. All right, body. thanks. Be yep, careful. have a good one. There is a storm of brewing over there, boys. That's the way we're headed to. So, I may have uh, not seen, we'll go with that, not seen that a scale was open and uh, as I was driving by, made awkward eye contact with a trooper that was running back to his car to hop in and uh, come pull me over. Uh, nice guy. Um, <laughs> that's my, there's no excuse for it, but I, uh, as I was coming up the hill, it's, uh, on, I don't know what road, it's a road that comes down from New York down into Pennsylvania and comes into, like, Williamsport, PA, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but, uh, as it, it comes up this really long hill and there was, like, a line of trucks in the right lane, and they were crawling up the mountain so I got over in the left lane and was doing the speed limit to a speed limit which is 70 miles an hour and uh, at that point then I couldn't get back over for the scale and I just kept driving well they came and pulled me over and uh, I got a $75 ticket for that but it is what it is guy was nice though absolutely no idea where I am Adam help me out I'm on 322 just came up a really big mountain just past the mandatory truck stop and came down the mountain and uh, I have no idea what town I'm in so Adam will help us in the comments if he sees this video he'll see this video he watches all my videos and uh, he'll let us know where I am I swear if it wasn't for the size and the image stabilization of a GoPro, I would throw it out the window and hope I run over it. Never wants to turn on. Always have to like take the battery out and put it back in to get it to turn on. And then when it turns on, it just starts recording in time lapse. If there's any other camera that has that image stabilization, I don't like carrying my big camera all the time because I can't just keep it right here in the center console ready to go if something happens I just I'd like my big camera for sit down talking shots I don't like using my phone because of one for storage and two for um, image stabilization so if there's another small like action camera um, that does you know the same thing as a GoPro let me know that you guys use I saw the um, Insta360 Go 2, but it only holds, it only stays charged for like half an hour. And I don't know how much footage it used, but it's literally about this big. And they have it where you can, you know, clip it on your hat, <coughs> excuse me, and you can, you know, do more hands on things without having this, <coughs> excuse me, even though a GoPro is not that big, it's kind of awkward walking around with a GoPro on your head or strapped to your chest. Uh, so I might look into that. But anyways, so I was scheduled to pick up that mower I was telling you guys about. Called the guy on Friday. Said, hey, coming through the area on Monday afternoon, uh, I'll pick up that mower. He called back on Sunday. It took him Friday, Saturday, some three days to get back to me. And said, um, yeah, anytime on Monday is good. Just give me a call and you're about two hours out. I have it ready call the guy two hours out and he's magically uh, not gonna be home now so I don't have time to wait around today it is my ETA to home is 5 39 p.m. and I have family pictures 
at 6.15. I have to shower, I have to change, we have to drive to the location all in that, you know, 35 minutes from the time I get home. So, I'm rushing, the mower's just gonna have to wait. But the reason I just thought about that, I wasn't really that mad, it is what it is. It's for one of my great customers. So I'll just text him and say, hey, the pickup guy, I couldn't get it today. And it won't be a big deal. But the guy was supposed to call me. I was supposed to be at the house at 3. That was the original time. So when he said he couldn't meet, I changed my GPS instead of going there. Then I changed it to go home. And uh, he said, okay, well, if I get done early, I'll call you and uh, see where you're at. Because I had to come through the area anyways. Or I could come through that area. I took a different way home. But... It's 4.27 now and I still haven't heard from him, so I guess he got caught up in whatever he was doing and uh, we'll just have to find another day to get it.